Welcome, Bonnies, 
It's another Sunday and we're so excited to have a service and just to love God, hear His Word and worship together. So uh, we want to always encourage if you're new and you're joining us for the first time, there's a link below. Uh, type new, uh, click on the link, fill in the form. We would love to connect with you. The link is in the comments also, which is so great. So you'll see a little picture come up right here. Click on that link and we would love to hear from you. Church, it is almost Valentine's Day, which is so exciting for some people. But it's <laughs> extra exciting for us because we are finally opening church again to everybody oh yeah so up to 50 people you will need to book for the services on church center remember that app that we spoke about for so long on church center you will need to book you can also figure out how to use church center by looking on our website you'll see a page on our front home page talking all about church center yeah. and how to use it and if you have any issues with it please feel free to pop us a message you'll see on our website there is a little link where you can chat to us and we'll get back to you and help you through that process we are really excited to see people again and just worship together so please make sure that you make a booking for the services absolutely it's so essential and i know it can be a bit tedious at times but uh it's just for the season we have to do it as the health and safety protocols and so we want to ask you really register now but also lee they have to register their kids for children's church and so you'll see a link there don't forget just like we did last year register the adults in the sunday service and the kids under the kids service and so that we can cater well for you and be prepared for you other exciting news lee mm -hmm. next week friday the 12th the yes. 12th of february all our kids programs kick off on friday night and so we're also super excited about that we get to get some motion get to love your kids and uh, get to teach them god's word and so we're so looking forward to it. church is kicking off again and we can't wait to celebrate with you absolutely our youth programs are also kicking off next week so the same night the 12th yeah. okay just in time for all of us getting back into church so please make sure that you also book your youth for the youth service and that will be right after the children's ministry programs bookings are seriously essential like we said just for yeah. safety we need to make sure that our barnies are kept as safe as possible and that they are also just enjoying the services with us and we know how many we are going to be accommodating yeah. so church remember to make your bookings on church center and we are going to get into the service now yeah, grab your pens grab your bibles and uh, grab a cup of coffee we're going to love god together Hello everybody and welcome to today's service. We are so grateful to have you with us online or wherever you may find yourself. Come let us worship the Lord together and let us exalt His name. Amen. Come set your rule and reign in our hearts again. Increase in us we pray. Unveil what we were made. Come set our hearts ablaze with hope, like wildfire in our very souls. Holy Spirit, come invade us now. We are your church. We need your power in us. We seek your kingdom first, we hunger and we thirst, refuse to waste our lives, for your our joy and prize, to see the captive heart release the hurt, the sick. Change the atmosphere 
show your mighty hand heal our streets and land set your turn turn to fire Lord, you are good. You are awesome. And you are mighty God. And thank you for being our Savior. Thank you for being our Lord, our King, our friend forever. Falling on my knees in Giving all I am to seek your face Lord, all I am is yours My whole life I place in your hands God of mercy, humble I your presence at your throne I call you answer and you came to my rescue and I want to be where you and friends it's uh, just good to chat to you today again and I just want to talk to you a little bit about giving um, you know when you read Acts chapter 20 
And from verse 13 onwards, Paul is busy uh, just giving farewells and he's moving on and he realizes that he's going to be uh, persecuted for his faith and probably be killed. So uh, then he gives the, 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 the Ephesians elders this whole spiel about him working hard uh, and so on. And, and li listen to it. It says, now I commit you to God and to the word of grace, which can build you up and give you an inheritance among all those uh, who are sanctifiers. I have not coveted anyone's silver or gold or clothing. Uh, you yourselves know that these hands of mine have supplied my own needs and the needs of my companions. In everything I did, I showed you that by this, by hard work, we must help the weak. Remembering the words of the Lord Jesus, it is more blessed to give than to receive. So Paul is setting an example and saying, I work very, very hard so that um, I'm not dependent on anybody else for, for my needs. So he says, I work extremely hard. I, I, I'm not looking for handouts. And, and you know that among, uh, um, among the bre brethren, he is saying. So he says, so uh, I'm doing this because we are helping those who are weak among us, those who are in need. And, and you know what, folk, the Bible does say that we will always have the poor among us. And in a sense, they are the weak ones. You know, the poor will always be among us. And then he ends this little bit and he says, it's more blessed to give than to receive. I am sure that you've seen it in your own life as well. Is when you give someone something and the joy on their faces and you feel that blessing, it, it just encourages you, it, it motivates you, it strengthens you, strengthens you. So Paul says, it's more blessed to give than it is to receive. I know you're working hard with your hands. I know you're working hard at your job. Uh, but we need to continue to be givers in the kingdom of God. So I'm appealing to you. Don't fall behind on your tithes and your offerings. Give and assist us. Help us to make sure that this ministry is growing and effective in this community. God bless you. I'm going to pray for you. Father, thank you for those who are giving. I pray that you would bless them and pour out your Holy Spirit upon them and meet all their needs according to your riches in glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Folks, it's so nice to be in your home and to uh, speak to you about God's Word. You know, revival is one of my favorite topics. I love praying about it, speaking about it, reading about it as well. And so my invitation to you is come and wrestle with us for revival. Um, as I said a couple of weeks ago as well, that Jacob wrestled with God until God blessed him. And he wouldn't let God go. Uh, you can read that, 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 that chapter in the Bible as well. So in a sense, I would like you to wrestle with me for revival and not let God go on this one. We trust in God to revive us and renew us and strengthen us as a church. Uh, revival doesn't start out there. Revival starts with you and me. When you and I are focused and are walking passionately with God and effectively uh, in His kingdom, then we will see the lost being saved. So that's my encouragement to you as well. Come and wrestle with us for revival. We have had awesome, awesome, awesome times of prayer. Um, we have prayed at the prayer wall. We have um, believed and we still believe in God for revival. We're going through 21 days of, of the Daniel fast together as well. So we're trusting God that God will renew us and we're doing daily devotions on that. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, uh, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven, I will forgive their sins, and heal their land. Remember last week I said to you that all of us, in some other way, we are crying out and say, Lord, will you heal our land? Lord, will you do something? Will you renew us? Will you, will you do a miracle here in our land? Uh, maybe your cry is uh, for God to heal because you see the corruption, you see the lawlessness, you see the virus, whatever it is that is in your heart, or maybe a number of these, is Lord, heal our land. And, and, and last week I gave you some uh, scriptures where it indicates that God says, I will make you a promise, but I will also give you the condition. So if you keep the condition, if you meet the conditions, then I will keep my promise as well. And in this verse, whenever you see if, you already know that a condition uh, is coming and, and, and a promise is following. So it says, if my people, so we are waiting for the promise. If my people, and the condition we're going through step by step now as well. So if we want God to forgive our sins, if we want God to hear from heaven and come down and heal our land, then the ifs, we must meet those conditions. Last week I said, if my people will humble themselves 
And today I'm going to take you to the next condition. If my people will pray. If my people will pray. You know, I think, uh, and I say it tongue in cheek, but if you really want to have an empty service next week in your, in, in your church, then just announce that we're going to pray for half an hour. Most people will just not come. A couple of years ago, we prayed uh, in every service, like 10 or 15 minutes. I would just say, come on, break up and pray together. And some people stop coming to church because of that. And I think if my people will pray, we need to motivate and encourage one another to pray. We know that revival means that we want to see an improvement in a condition, an awakening in a church community. Um, and, and, and that is exactly, there's a need, I think, not only in our own church, but churches to be revived and to, to, to have that awakening in us personally and in our church as well. So we're praying. Uh, we've got to meet the conditions. We've got to meet the conditions. Uh, you know, um, uh, the, 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 I'm convinced, it is my conviction that this church, our church, but churches, our land needs a revival. We are not on the incline spiritually, folks. We are on the decline. We've seen it over the last year that the, those who are committed, those who are faithful are less than those who gathered together with us before COVID-19. So I'm not re referring to numerical growth when we speak about revival. I'm, I'm referring to passion, I'm referring to commitment, and I'm referring to effectiveness. That is definitely lacking in the church today. And I'm talking church universal as well. The church needs revival. The church needs re revival because we are falling and failing in the area of humility. That's what I spoke about last week. But the church also needs revival, my dear friend, I believe, because we are failing in the area of prayer. You see, we are not wrestling with God. We're not gathering in the throne room of God to talk to Him on our knees. Like they, uh, Paul says, I bend my knees in Ephesians chapter 4. He says, I bend my knees. For this reason, I bend my knees. We're not doing that before God. So we definitely need revival because there's a lack of prayer. There's a lack of a willingness to pray and even a passion to pray as well. You, can, you don't measure the temperature of your church, my friend, by, by the loudness of your music or the, the, the enthusiasm of your pastor. You don't measure the effectiveness of your church by, by even the involvement of people in worship. I think prayerlessness is definitely a measurement of the effectiveness of a church. Prayerlessness is a, a sure sign that there is a, a, a lack of personal and corporate revival. When we don't pray, it is a definite sign. Prayerlessness is one of our enemies. And like I said, most of us battle in the area of prayer. We struggle with it. And I want to encourage you to develop and strengthen your prayer. Because as your wife would say to you, you're not communicating. You're not talking with me. So I think God is sitting in heaven and saying, my kids, you're not talking to me. You're not communicating with me. So the temperature of every church is measured in its prayer meetings. If we want to, a, a revival to come into our lives and into our church, we've got to be on our knees before God. Um, so our personal prayer and our corporate prayer needs to be strengthened. Let me highlight a couple of things that I believe are hindrances when it comes to our prayer life. Uh, and for God to even hear our prayers. And some of them are obvious. The first reason why, the first thing that is a hindrance in our prayer life is when we ignore God's word. When we ignore God's word. Listen to what it says in Proverbs chapter 28 verse 9. If one turns away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer is an abomination. Wow. E even his prayer is an abomination. You know, in other words, God is saying, if you turn your ear away from hearing my law, if you're ignoring my word, then even your prayers is an abomination to me. God places such a high priority on his word so that if we ignore that word and if we, if we refuse to hear what God is saying through his word, if we refuse to be willing to obey, if we selectively obey God's word, then God says your prayer will even be an abomination. Another translation says your prayer will be detestable to the Lord. 
Those are very, very strong words. So Proverbs, the Bible, God is bringing us back and saying, if you want me to hear your prayers, you better place a high value on my word. It includes the Bible's authority as God's revelation to you and me. It includes the fact that this is the unfallible word of God to you and me. It includes the fact that all of this that God is saying in here is there for us to obey and for us to want to obey. You see, if you reject, my dear friend, the primary communication from God to you and me, you're actually rejecting the real Jesus. Because that is who is revealed in this Bible to you and me. So God says, if you neglect and ignore my word in totality, then your prayers are detestable. Your prayers are an abomination. Let's go on to the second thing that will hinder our prayer. Unconfessed sin. Unconfessed sin, I think, is one of the, the greatest killers of our prayers. Unconfessed sin actually uh, um, show that we disregard God's word. We disregard God's laws. And, and it's really offensive to God as well. In Psalm 66, verse 18, it says, If I regard wickedness in my heart, the Lord will not hear. Interesting. Another translation says this. If I cherish iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not listen. You know what? I have some rifles that I, that I, that I use for hunting. And, and you always... And uh, you always check the barrel to see if there's anything inside that barrel that, that, is, that could be a blockage. And you would clean that out before you would use that rifle. And, and prayer, sin, is actually exactly like that for us as well. Is when we, when we want to talk to God and there's hindrances in the barrel, it's something that blocks us from communicating with God. So you've got to remove those hindrances. The word cherish here, if you cherish wickedness in your heart the lord will not listen to you that word cherish means that i love sin i don't i don't even confess it i don't see it as serious i love it i, I keep it in my heart um you know the bible says to us that your prayers will be unanswered and so many of us may come to god today and say lord why are you not answering my prayer well the question is is are you placing a high value on on god's word is there unconfessed sin? Are you cherishing sin? Is there sin in your life that you're saying, you know what, God will really be okay with this? The Bible says your prayers, our prayers will not be heard if we cherish iniquity. In other words, holding unrepented sin in our hearts, in our lives. As believers from time to time, we struggle. We struggle with, with a, a reoccurring sin in our lives, don't we? Now, I don't believe that this verse specifically speaks to that. If we really struggle to give it up, God does listen. And God gives us the energy and the power to deal with it as well. But sometimes we willfully harbor sin. We don't even struggle. We just think it's okay to do that. God will show his grace and God will understand. The Bible says if you regard wickedness in your heart, unconfess sin. If you cherish it, then I will not hear your prayer. Obviously, the good news today for you and me is if there is sin that you know about, the Bible says if you forgive your sin, he is faithful and just to forgive your sin and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Thank God for that, cleansing me from all unrighteousness. You know, Corrie ten Boom, who lived many, many years ago, was an amazing woman of God, a Dutch lady, said if you confess your sin, God takes your sin, throws it in the deepest end of the sea, and then puts a board up there, no fishing. He cleanses you. Jeremiah 31, verse 34 says, For I will forgive their wickedness and will re remember their sins no more. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? Where you and I can forgive, but we really battle to forget. God says, I will forgive and remember them. I will throw it into the deepest end of the sea and I will not remember it. You better not go there then as well. Not only has God forgiven us, when we confess our sin, but God truly forgets our sins. He blots it out like it never happened. That's the freedom that you can experience when you confess your sin. And at this stage, when you do that, your relationship with God is restored and your prayers are heard by the Lord. Our past actions may still have con consequences, but the sin will be forgiven and God will hear our prayer. Number three, the third reason why our prayers will be hindered 
is because we desire wrongly. James chapter 4 verse 2 to 3 says this, you do not have because you do not ask. You ask and you do not receive because you ask wrongly to spend it on your own passions. You see, James make two, uh, he makes two points here. He says, first of all, you don't get because you don't ask. And then he says, secondly, you ask with the wrong motives. You ask because you're just looking after number one. You're just looking after yourself. And isn't it true, come on, let's be honest, that most of our prayers are me, mine, and ours for myself. Lord, bless me. Lord, Lord give me. Lord, protect me. Let, Lord, do better for me kind of thing, Lord. You know, wrong motives. Spending it on our own passions. And some of us are not even asking. That's why God is, has, is not answering, because you're not even asking. And this is what James is saying, is we desire wrongly. We desire wrongly. We should learn what we should pray and how we should pray. And, and you know, most of our prayers should be focused not on ourselves, but on others, I believe, because that is unselfish. The fourth thing I think that will hinder our prayers is a lack of faith. And, and I want to be very careful here and be very gentle with you today because sometimes people have come up to me and say, Rolf, I'm not healed. Is it because of a lack of faith? Is there sin in my life? And I'm just taking healing as an example. And you know, yes, I know that there have been messages in the past that have said that. You do not get because you don't have faith. You do not get because you, there's sin in your life. And it were, well, may well be true. It may well be true. But, you know, I don't think it's always true. I don't think it's always true. Sometimes when it comes to this stuff, we just need to say, Lord, we don't understand. We don't understand. But let me tell you, let's move that aside. The lack of faith is an incredibly negative impact in a Christian's life. It has a negative impact in our life, the lack of faith. Without faith, prayer has no power. Prayer has no power. So if you're just mentioning to the Lord, if you're just rattling it off, if you're just doing your duty, if you're just saying your prayers, I just like it when we say, I say my prayers, because I'm communicating with God. You see, even Jesus was powerless to perform miracles in Nazareth because of the people's lack of faith. James calls us not to doubt. And he says, if you doubt, you're like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. That man should not even think that he will receive anything from the Lord. He's a double-minded man, unstable in all he does. Don't doubt. Have faith. Believe that God will answer your prayer. The word double-minded minded speaks of a, a, a condition where a person is emotionally divided. Almost like he has two, two, two ideas, two souls, or two ideas. You know, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. That person... Uh, will not receive what they're asking God for as well. So the condition makes a person unstable and incapable of hearing God and receiving the gift that God has for them. I want to talk to you about how to make your prayer life a little bit better. You know, we just talked about the hindrances in prayer. Let's, let's talk a little bit about how to, how to enjoy your prayer life. How to enjoy your prayer life. I think the first thing you've got to realize is you've got to become more aware of God. You've got to become more aware of God. The Bible says very clearly, He's everywhere at any time. He's everywhere. He's anywhere. You cannot move without God not being present in your life. And yes, that is a scary thought, especially because when we commit sin, that God sees, God knows, God He's, he's right there as well. But the good news of it, uh, is that in Hebrews chapter 13 verse 5 it says, He will never leave you nor forsake you. In other words, He will, he will be right where you are and, and when you therefore talk to Him, wherever you are, even in the bathroom, wherever you are, God is right there listening to you. It makes your relationship grow stronger when you know that the person is omnipresent. When you drive, you can talk to him. When you walk, you can talk to him. I have a brother-in-law who goes on prayer walks for many, many years. I learned that from him. I now and then do that as well. He does it every day. And he just goes on a walk and he just talks to the Lord about the list of names. He has a little black book with people's names and things in that he's praying for. Now, I've also learned, my dear friend, that I, I go for a walk. And sometimes it may even sound silly. And I say, Lord, this tree is amazing. I love the greenery. I love the flowers. These roses are so beautiful. Yeah, Lord, the, the grass. I'm just so impressed with how this is just forming such a thick mat here on my, in my garden. You know, whatever it is, my friend, talk to God like he's a friend. 
Talk to God like he's a friend. I, didn't, I wouldn't like it if I was God and my people just come and, Lord this, and Lord this and Lord this and Lord give me this and Lord bless me this and Lord this is another pain in my life. I would rather like them to now and then talk to me about just like being a friend as well. All right? I also want to encourage you. If you want to enjoy your prayer life, pray the word of God. We have got these prayer uh, these um, verses on the prayer wall at the moment, if you haven't seen them yet, where we just pray the Lord, I am the Lord that healeth thee. I am the Lord that healeth thee. That's what God says. And I pray that over and over over those people. I am the Lord that healeth thee. I have come to heal your wounds. I've come to heal your soul. I will restore your body. And that's all verses in the Bible. You know, and, and pray the word of God as well. So be aware of him, pray his word back to him, because that's what he says. And in a sense, I remind him of what you've said. The next thing I think is important when it comes to making your prayer life uh, enjoyable is schedule it. Make a specific time for it. How oh, I'm too busy, Rulo. Yes, I know. We're all too busy, aren't we? But Jesus was also too busy. Can you imagine being Jesus? And wherever you go, and I just read it this morning in the Bible, that somebody called him uh, to pray for his daughter, and then he would go. Somebody would say, Lord, heal me, and then he would heal. And he would be back and forth all over the place, praying for everybody, ministering to everybody all day long. But there were times in his busy schedule that he withdrew with all the demands on him. He withdrew. He found time to talk to his heavenly father. My friend, if Jesus needed to talk to his heavenly father, if Jesus, the son of God, if Jesus himself needed to set time aside to talk and hear from the father, because he says, I do nothing unless the father tells me to. If Jesus needed that, if he needed that schedule, surely you and I would need that as well. The Lord knows. He knows your challenges. And will give you grace because he's a good God. He will give you the grace because he's a good God. Make a specific time. Make a specific time. You see, put prayer in your schedule. Treat it as like vital and as important. Create a reoccurring event in your calendar. And thank God for, for, for the tools that we, that we have. An alarm that goes off and say, go read your Bible now. That's your appointment. See it as an appointment. Schedule it in your diary. You see, when you treat this, you treat prayer as important. It is like a meeting, an appointment with God. Make it a, an appointment with God on a daily basis. But also, in my own life, there is an appointment. But there's also a lot of times that I just talk to God right through the day. Right through the day. The next thing I think I want to bring to your attention in closing is, in your prayer life, be consistent as well. Be consistent. You know, make that appointment a regular one. Be consistent. Stick to it. Like going to the gym. A muscle is not trained in a day. A muscle is not well trained if you do it once a month or once every now and then. It needs regular training to develop that muscle. And <clears throat> prayer is not developed overnight as well. You know, you can't get up. Uh, I, I used to, as a young believer, look at people and I think, I can't pray like this. How on earth will I ever be able to do that point? You see, but, but God says, listen to this verse that we're dealing with in, in 2 Chronicles 7, chapter 14. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray. Prayer is a condition for revival. If you want to see the Lord heal this land, you've got to be consistent. You've got to schedule your prayer. You've got to be, make sure you're right with God when you pray so that we, God hears our prayers and our prayers are not an abomination to God. If my people, you say, Rulof, I'm struggling to pray long. Well, then start with a minute. Start with two minutes. Because in Zechariah 4 verse 10, it says, don't despise the day of small beginnings. Even in your prayer life, don't despise those small beginnings. Just start doing it. You see, it would help you to be more consistent in your prayer if you have a commitment, if you have a time that you said in your diary. And even if maybe if you have peers that check up onto you to see, uh, keep yourself accountable as well. You see, in, in Mike Bickle's book, Growing in Prayer, he says this, As we come to know God as our tender father, and Jesus as the bridegroom king, we are energized to see God with all our strength and to experience new delight in our relationship with him. As we come to God our Father, as we come to the Lord Jesus Christ, 
the bridegroom, as we come to be energized by the Spirit of God with all our strength, we will experience new dimensions in our relationship with Him. We will delight in Him. Have you talked to God this morning? Have you talked to Him today? Have you read His letter to you, His book to you, His Bible? Are you willing to obey it so that He will not detest and find your prayers an abomination? Are you willing to confess the sin and get rid of it? Are you willing to come with him, to Him in faith? Are you willing to say, Lord, I, I will desire what is in your eyes right and pleasing and change my prayer life even if I have to? Lord God, I pray that in Jesus' name, you would help us to grow in our prayer lives. If my people will pray, if my people will pray, that we would not shun away, move away from prayer meetings, but that prayer meetings, personal and corporate, would become something that we so look forward to on a, on a regular basis. I ask that in Jesus' name. We want communion with you, Lord. Amen. Let me close the service by reminding you that we do have monthly prayer meetings. We pray every Monday at the wall for those that are sick. Uh, from now on, we pray every first Monday of the, the month. We will pray together. Come online. We, we really want people to come and pray with us. It's good for you. It's right for us. And uh, through it, revival could come and would come to us. But also want to ask you, folks, here's the most important question for today. If you don't know Christ as your Lord and Savior, there's a link there that you can follow. Won't you click on it and talk to us? We would love you to experience and we would love to, you to lead you into a meaningful, committed relationship with God. God bless you and have an awesome day. Let's come to a very special time of the month, the first Sunday of every month where we take communion and share it together. And so I just want to read a portion of scripture. It's from 1 Corinthians 11 and I'm going to summarize it quickly. And as Jesus was sitting on the night that he was betrayed, uh, he sat with his disciples and he took the bread and the cup and he said, this is my body that has been broken for you. And then he took the cup and he said, drink this in remembrance of me. And Nick, you know, one of the most important things he said uh, in this portion here in verse 27, whoever eats and drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner is guilty um, concerning the body and the blood of the Lord. Let every person examine himself and so eat the bread and then eat and drink of the cup. Mm -hmm. And so that's so important, Nick, you know, eat, examining yourself first yeah. and making sure that you're in the right place with the Lord Jesus. Yeah. You know, it's an excellent time once a month just to come and ask yourself that question. What's my relationship like Jesus like? You know, uh, what's amazing about communion is this, is that it reminds us about Jesus Christ and everything that he's done for you. Yeah. It reminds you that he died on a cross so that you can be set free. It reminds us that His grace is poured over your life. If you accepted Him, He's your Savior and you're right with Him. And so all these things, should we should remind ourselves of these things. Look at the, the communion elements, what they remind us about Christ. And, and, and if you're not right with Jesus, what a great time. Yeah. What a great time to fix your relationship with Him. If you are, Bryce, what a great time to just say, thank you, Lord, for everything that you've done for me. Absolutely, Nick. You know, it's such a special time. And so if you haven't got your elements ready, you can do it later with your family. Um, but I really want to encourage you, you know, take it seriously and break bread together and uh, take the wafer or whatever you use. And uh, it's, this is so symbolic, Nick. And we take it in remembrance of what he's done for us, his body that was broken for us. So let's take the bread together. Then we're going to take the cup. And Nick, don't you want yeah. to share with us? I want to say to you today as you take the cup, I want to remind you that Jesus loves you. Yeah. That he, he forgave you your sins. And the reason he did that is because God's plan was always, this is amazing, that you and I would actually be in his presence eternally. That's why he did it. And the Bible says he predestined that. Before we were even born, um, before we, whilst we were always still sinners, Christ died for us because that's what God's heart is. And so as you take the, the wine today, remind yourself, think about it. Jesus 
loves you, died for you, wants to spend eternity with you. Let's do that together. Amen. Let's close in prayer, Nick, and uh, just thank the Lord for what He's done for us. Look, yeah. Amen. Father, I thank you uh, that you have saved us. I thank you every time we do communion, it comes to the essence of who you are and what you've done. And that is reconciled man back to God. And so, Father, I want to just say thank you. And I pray for every person today who has taken communion with us, that your love and your grace would pour out over them. In Jesus' name. Thanks for joining us for the service and uh, such a powerful message on prayer, Lee. And this is really the time for revival. We are so excited about what God's doing in our hearts, in your hearts. And uh, we can't wait to see um, just the results of what's going to come forth from this time of prayer and fasting. And so thanks for joining us today. Keep praying, stay praying, communicate with God, love Him. If you've just made the biggest decision of your life and chosen to follow Jesus and accept Jesus, then won't you click on the link? You'll see the links next next to us in the comments. Um, won't you click on the link that says New Believers? That is the link that you'll need to follow. Give us your details because we'd love to connect with you and just walk you through this process. Absolutely, Lee. And uh, the other exciting thing is that this is officially day six, seven, day seven of the Daniel yes. fast, day seven. And uh, so we we really hope that you are sticking to the Daniel fast. Um, it's something that it's a, it is a sacrifice. Fasting is always a sacrifice. But sometimes I heard one of our pastors in our neighboring area. He said, he said, you know what? Fasting isn't so that we can get more of God. It's so that God can get more of us. And so, so that's really, we want to just give God our soul sacrifice. And uh, yeah, it's a time of cleansing, man. We're going to see the Holy Spirit move like we've never seen him move before. And so please go on to the Daniel Fast page. Um, it's connected to our link, uh, our Facebook. And so we want to connect with you there, share food ideas, share devotions, and uh, looking forward to that. We really do have all the resources available, including people who would love to connect with you. So if you'd like to send prayer requests or just connect with us, pop us a message send us suggestions we would really love to hear from you you'll see all the links in the comments and um use them use them because we love feedback feedback's your friend and we would really love to make church the best experience for you absolutely so don't forget register for the services next week there is still online church because we are aware many of us are in different areas countries provinces and so we will still will connect with you online but those who are in the boss crane and in the heart of Beersport area your local church is open so connect with us and uh, we'll see you next week Sparrows not worry about tomorrow or the troubles to come. The lily's not thinking about the seasons, the drought or the flood. The tree that's planted by the water isn't phased by the fire. So why should I be? Cause you take good care of me. You take good care of me and you know what I need before I even ask a thing yeah you hold me in your hands with the kindness that never ends carried in your love no matter what the future brings are you taking Sun's not worried about the winter, cause soon it will pass. The light's not thinking about the darkness or the shadow it cast. A heart that's planted in forgiveness doesn't dwell in the past. So why should I be? Come on, cause you take good care of me. Take good care of me And you know what I need before
before I even ask a thing Yeah, you hold me in your hands With a kindness that never ends Carried in your love No matter what the future brings Yeah, you take good care of me Yeah, you take good care of me. 